Welcome to this lecture about ultrasound imaging of epidermal inclusion cyst. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to know the definition of epidermal cyst. The true synonyms of the cyst. The pathophysiology of the cyst formation. Ultrasound features of the intact and complicated cyst. In the last part of this lecture, we will review some cases from daily clinical practice. Epidermal inclusion cysts are the most common cutaneous cysts. It is a slow-growing, painless mass that elevate the skin and often have a central punctum that represents the plugged orifice of the pilosebaceous follicle. It is dermal or hypodermal cystic structure composed of epidermal elements that include a granular layer and keratinous material. Numerous synonyms for epidermal inclusion cysts exist, including epidermoid cyst, epidermal cyst, infundibular cyst, inclusion cyst, and keratin cyst. The center of epidermoid cyst almost always contains keratin and not sebum. They also do not originate from sebaceous glands, therefore, epidermal inclusion cysts are not sebaceous cysts. The term sebaceous cyst should not be used when describing an epidermoid cyst. Epidermoid cysts can be found anywhere, but are commonly found on hair-bearing areas, as on the face, neck, chest, upper back, and scrotum. They can also be found on the buttocks and palms, as well as on the plantar side of feet, if due to penetrating trauma. The epidermoid cyst can occur at any age, but it is more frequent in adulthood. The size of the cysts can range from a few millimeters to several centimeters in diameter. Lesions may remain stable or progressively enlarge over time. Infected cysts tend to be larger, erythematous, and more noticeable to the patient. Pathophysiology of the cyst formation Lesions usually occur spontaneously. However, implantation of the epithelium as a result of injury is considered etiologic factor. Therefore, it may also be called epidermal inclusion cyst. Due to surgery or skin disorders, epidermal cells penetrate deep into the skin and multiply. The cyst wall is lined with stratified squamous epithelium, therefore peeling of keratin layers will accumulate inside the cyst. Plugging of the follicular orifice can cause an epidermoid. Generally, epidermal inclusion cyst is unilocular cyst without septation, encapsulated with fibrous tissue, and lined by a thin layer of squamous cells. If the cyst has been infected, chronic inflammatory cell infiltration may be present outside the cyst wall. If the lining of epidermal cyst is ruptured, and the keratin contained within the cyst are spilled out into the surrounding soft tissue, then acute foreign body granulomatous reaction will develop in response to the keratin. Approximately less than 1% of epidermal inclusion cysts have a malignant transformation to basal cell carcinoma or squamous cell carcinoma. Ultrasound appearance depend on maturation of cyst and amount and compactness of keratin, as well as presence of cyst rupture and degree of cyst collapse. Ultrasound appearance can be divided into three categories. Intact cyst, partially ruptured cyst and totally ruptured cyst. Epidermal inclusion cyst most of the time is a solid lesion. It has a dermal attachment. The shape of intact cyst can be ovoid, rounded, lobulated, and tubular. Ovoid shape is the commonest shape, as you can see in this case. It is seen in approximately 70% of the cases. It can be rounded with well-defined margins, as in this case or it can have lobulated shape, as in this case. Or it can be tubular, as you can see in this case. 
The echogenicity of the lesions can be either echogenic or hypoechoic to the surrounding tissue, as you can see in these two cases. On the right side of the screen, the lesion is hyperechoic to the surrounding tissues, while the lesion on the left side of the screen is hypoechoic to the surrounding tissues. The internal echotexture of the cyst depends on the presence of variable amount of keratin within the cyst, which alters the appearance of internal echoes. Most of the cysts are inhomogeneous or heterogeneous, as in this case. Some epidermal cysts are homogeneous and showing pseudotestis appearance, as in this case. This is another case, as you can see, the cyst is homogeneous with pseudotestis appearance. Some cysts may show alternating hypoechoic and hyperechoic eccentric rings due to keratin layer. This appearance is called onion peel pattern. Or it may appear as hypoechoic lesion with anechoic or hypoechoic clefts and scattered linear echogenic reflectors, rice like. Posterior acoustic enhancement is seen in approximately 90 to 95 percent of the cases of epidermal inclusion cysts. This feature of posterior acoustic enhancement is an important characteristic which enables us to differentiate them with other subcutaneous lesions. A noticeable characteristic is that the cyst can communicate with the skin surface through a keratin filled orifice, so called punctum. On color Doppler examination, most of the cases show no evidence of internal vascularity. If the cyst gets infected, increased vascularity is observed in the periphery of the cyst. If rupture occurs, keratin spreads into the surrounding tissue, leading to a reactive inflammation, which causes surrounding hypoechoic fluid collection. In partial rupture there will be focal disruption of the cyst wall as seen in this case. The yellow arrow is pointing here to the focal wall disruption. And the blue arrow is pointing to the leaked hypoechoic content outside the cyst. Color Doppler examination showing increased blood flow in the periphery of the cysts, frequently low flow. Another case here of partial rupture of epidermoid cyst in the breast as you can see. The yellow arrow is pointing to the focal wall disruption. And the blue arrow is pointing to the leaked hypoechoic content outside the cyst. A big change in the morphology of the cyst will happen if total rupture occurred. This will result in an ill-defined hypoechoic structure. The posterior acoustic enhancement is usually seen. Again, increased echogenicity of the surrounding tissues and peripheral vascularity may be noticed. This is a case of epidermoid cyst with total rupture. As you can see, there is ill-defined hypoechoic lesion with dermal attachment and posterior acoustic enhancement. Color Doppler showing peripheral vascularity. Let's look at these cases. Case number one is a 30 years old male with swelling at the posterior aspect of the shoulder. As you can see in this cine clip, there is hypoechoic, oval shaped lesion with dermal attachment and subcutaneous location. The lesion shows heterogeneous echotexture with well defined margins and posterior acoustic enhancement. On color Doppler examination, there is no internal flow. These ultrasound features are highly suggestive of epidermal inclusion cyst. The diagnosis was confirmed by histopathology. Case number two is a 61 years old male with swelling at the anterior aspect of the neck. As you can see in these cine clips, there is lobulated shaped lesion with dermal attachment. The lesion is located in the subcutaneous layer and showing mixed hyper and hypoechoic echo pattern. The lesion shows posterior acoustic enhancement. On color Doppler examination, there is no internal flow. These ultrasound features are highly suggestive of epidermal inclusion cyst. 
Again, the diagnosis was confirmed by histopathology. Thank you very much for your attention.